Attention, I know all eyes are on Flight 6 right now, but I'm here to tell you a major milestone is on the horizon. In Flight 7, we'll witness the debut of the next generation of Starship V2. SpaceX has confirmed it, and now the question is, will it launch this year? In addition, we'll cover some updates on the health of Crew-8 astronauts and take a look at the latest plans for the upcoming flight of Ariane 6. Let's dive into all this on today's episode of Great SpaceX. While we were still captivated by the excitement of Flight 5, SpaceX recently announced the launch date, timeline, and key updates for Flight 6. But at the end of this announcement, SpaceX included an equally intriguing teaser about Flight 7 and a new Starship version, V2. In their statement, SpaceX hinted at the upcoming changes, saying, Future ships starting with the vehicle planned for the seventh flight test will fly with significant upgrades, including redesigned forward flaps, larger propellant tanks, and the latest generation tiles and secondary thermal protection layers as we continue to iterate towards a fully reusable heat shield. Although they didn't directly refer to it as V2, the details strongly suggest it. First, let's look at the redesigned forward flaps, a defining feature of V2 compared to V1. After the flap damage observed in Flight 4, SpaceX outlined several changes, including smaller, sharper flaps. The joint connecting the flap to the ship has been streamlined, and the forward flap will be positioned closer to the nose and leeward side of the ship. These changes aim to enhance flap control during navigation and reduce stress and impact during re-entry. Next, images of S-33, the first version of V-2, reveal a slightly larger ship body, with the payload door positioned higher, indicating an increase in fuel tank capacity. This expansion is crucial for Starship's operational range, allowing it to carry more fuel to return to Starbase, support orbital refueling operations, and eventually venture beyond Earth orbit. Finally, significant upgrades to the heat shield will also be featured. Following Flight 4, SpaceX introduced a series of heat shield improvements starting with S-30. This includes new, more durable tiles, potentially made of an enhanced material, that will increase resilience and move closer to full reusability. Given the thousands of tiles needed per flight, reusability is essential for lowering production demands. Additionally, the heat shield is backed by secondary protective layers, known as ablative layers, which provide added durability and comprehensive protection for the ship. With all these upgrades, Starship V2 represents a major leap forward toward full reusability and extended mission capabilities. These upgrades are pivotal, with SpaceX highlighting their importance in the recent update. Learnings from this and subsequent flight tests will continue to make the entire Starship system more reliable as we close in on full and rapid reusability. In short, all signs point to Starship V2 taking center stage. This also implies that the final version of V1, Ship 32, won't be making its flight debut. I initially expected S-32 would be featured in Flight 7, with V2's debut in Flight 8, but it seems clear that the S-32 hasn't undergone any testing since its completion, signaling its retirement. The likely candidate for Flight 7 is the V-2 prototype Ship 33. After being assembled in a record 41 days, S-33 reached the Massey test site in late October for cryogenic testing. Following this, it returned to the production site at Megabay 2, where it received its engines. For now, it's equipped with Raptor 2 engines, though I expect that Raptor 3 will eventually be integrated, especially considering V-2's expected liftoff thrust of 8,240 tons, a figure Raptor 2 cannot achieve. This makes Raptor 3 development crucial for V-2's inaugural mission. If all goes smoothly, S-33 will soon head back to Massey for a static fire test. Once that phase is complete, it'll be ready to pair with a booster for integration testing. And now the question remains, which booster will fly alongside S-33? B-14, a V-1 booster, completed cryogenic testing in early October and only needs static fire testing before it's ready for integration. Alternatively, B-15, seemingly stacked in July alongside S-33, could be a match. B-15 remains behind closed doors in Mega Bay 1 with no visible signs of testing yet. So, what are your thoughts? Will B-14, with its advanced progress but older version, take the flight? Or will B-15, unpredictable but aligned with V-2, be the choice? Let's speculate in the comments. SpaceX's choice regarding the booster for S-33 will be critical as it impacts the timing of Flight 7. If they opt for B-14, there's a higher chance Flight 7 could be launched by the end of this year. However, if they go with B-15, with its slower development, the timeline becomes less certain. The mission profile of Flight 7 will also play a role. 
Elon Musk mentioned that SpaceX aims to catch the ship next year. If they intend for Flight 7 to attempt this catch, the mission may shift to next year. However, if SpaceX wants the launch to happen this year, the first V2 prototype will likely still land in the ocean. Personally, I'd prefer to see the prototype land more conservatively in the ocean rather than attempting an immediate catch. With five Starship flights this year, am I being overly optimistic? What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Regardless, one thing is certain. V2 will take flight in Flight 7. Type F7 V2 in the comments to mark this exciting milestone. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date with SpaceX's journey. Now, on to NASA's recent update regarding the health of the Crew-8 astronauts. NASA has provided limited information about the recent hospitalization of a Crew-8 astronaut following the crew's return to Earth after an extended mission aboard the ISS. On October 25th, NASA revealed that an unidentified astronaut had experienced a health concern, prompting medical staff to transport them to Ascension Sacred Heart Pensacola Hospital in Florida. Although all four crew members were evaluated at the hospital, only three were cleared and returned to Johnson Space Center immediately, while the affected astronauts stayed behind for further observation. In an update on October 26th, NASA confirmed that the astronaut had been released the following day and had rejoined their fellow crew members at Johnson Space Center. They reported that the astronaut was in good health and ready to resume standard post-flight reconditioning protocols. While NASA refrained from disclosing the astronaut's identity or specific medical details to protect their privacy, they assured the public that the crew member's condition was stable and did not pose an ongoing concern. This situation shines a light on the unique physical and medical challenges faced by astronauts after long-duration spaceflights. Spaceflight impacts the human body in ways still not fully understood, and each mission provides new insights into how microgravity, radiation exposure, and prolonged confinement affect astronaut health. Crew-8's mission lasted an impressive 235 days, well over the standard six-month duration for ISS rotations, exposing them to extended periods of these stressors. This extended mission time may have been a factor in the astronauts' health concern, though no details on this have been confirmed by NASA. At a press briefing, Crew-8 member Michael Barrett acknowledged the unexpected challenges that can arise in human spaceflight, stating, Spaceflight is still something we don't fully understand. We're finding things that we don't expect sometimes. He indicated that this incident was an example of those unexpected factors, and expressed NASA's commitment to respecting the astronauts' privacy while continuing to assess and understand the situation. Barrett also hinted that NASA may reveal additional information about the incident after their internal review concludes. The incident emphasizes the rigor of NASA's post-flight protocols, especially following such a lengthy mission, and highlights the agency's commitment to astronaut health. The post-flight reconditioning period involves thorough monitoring and physical recovery sessions to help astronauts readjust to Earth's gravity, address any health complications, and ensure they are ready for future missions. As the Crew-8 astronauts now undergo reconditioning, the incident also serves as a reminder of the importance of health and safety advancements as humanity aims for more ambitious missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. With each mission, NASA gains valuable data on the impacts of space travel on the human body, helping to refine procedures and support astronaut health on longer journeys to more distant destinations. The dedication of Crew-8, who contributed significantly to the ISS operations over their 235 days in orbit, under underscores the resilience and adaptability required for space exploration. Now, turning to Europe for an update on the Ariane 6, specifically its second flight. After the inaugural Ariane 6 mission this July, Ariane Space has announced there won't be additional launches for the remainder of the year. Initially, a follow-up launch was set for December, but it has now been postponed to mid-February aiming for early in the month. This second mission under Ariane Space's direction will involve deploying the CSO-3 reconnaissance satellite for the French military, marking a significant step for the Ariane 6 program as it begins fulfilling defense-related objectives. Despite the challenges encountered during the first mission, including an issue where the Upper Stage's Auxiliary Power Unit, or APU, failed to activate due to an out-of-limit temperature reading, ESA and Ariane Space remain confident in the upcoming schedule. Engineers identified the problem as a software-related oversight affecting the APU's sequence before the final deorbit burn, an issue they have since resolved. Arian Space has clarified that these were not critical hardware issues, reinforcing that the fix has been thoroughly tested and implemented. The Ariane 6 hardware is expected to arrive soon at the launch site in French Guiana, where it will undergo preparation for the February flight. 
Alongside the Vega C's anticipated return to flight mission on December 3rd, this milestone underscores Ariane Space's plans to build momentum in the coming months. The company is setting high expectations, aiming to conduct six Ariane 6 launches next year, a target that, if met, would demonstrate both reliability and an increased cadence in their launch schedule. It's a bold move, and only time will tell if Ariane Space can meet this ambitious launch rate for 2025, especially as they establish Ariane 6 as a reliable option in the competitive global launch market. Are you optimistic that Ariane Space can reach this goal and carve out a more substantial presence in the industry next year? In any case, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.